Hey, Wood Turners. I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and welcome to the shop. I've talked about this the last couple of weeks, and it's a pepper mill that I made seven years ago. And it was for a challenge at a club, and I really like it. And I worked hard when I was cutting it out to make sure I got good grain match all the way through. See that? I did that by not putting a tendon on the top, but cutting it and then putting a tendon between them. I gotta show you how to do that, but it's real simple. Uh, and it helps you, helps you with grain match, because the only space you lose is the thickness of your parting tool when it goes through it. And one of the guys that call, wrote about the, the, the last video, I have my D-Way parting tool in here. But remember, not everything's in here. So when I do happen upon stuff, then I can get to it and get get it done. And I did, I finished this pe pepper mill with a CA finish. It was one of the first things I put CA on. And as I'm looking at it now, it's seven years old. I could buff it a little bit and get some ridges and all out of it and make it shine like a little bit of polished glass. But for seven years of use on a kitchen table, having hands on it that's had food in contact with it and just a beaut and have people go, oh, oh, that smells nice. It's not like it has made the trip. It's really nice. It's a CA finish. We've got to talk more about that. It's not a cure-all. No, it's not. But it's pretty good. I, I got more stuff to talk to you about. But I gotta tell you first, because we gotta do it by the rules. The rules say first, you gotta watch. Okay, we put that away because that's it's it's a, it's a pet peeve with me. I don't want to do the videos and have the attitude of look what I can do. Not like you can't do it. What I did there, I took a standard kit for doing a pepper gr grinder, and where it shows you to put the neck or the fitting that one goes into the other, I just didn't do that step. I replaced that with a piece of Corian, but it can be hard wood either. And that was so that I didn't lose the gray match. When the things came together, the gray match looked like this, right? Okay? Now, if I took an inch out of it, the gray match might look like that. It's picky, but it's when you feel that you can do that, that you want it to be that way, well, I found a way. Now, last time we we visited, I was turning bottle stoppers. I'm going to go back to them because they're fun and I can polish them out and make them look like a diamond. But we were using a mandrel made by Ruth Niles. Um, Ruth, Ruth Niles bottle stoppers. I'll put the address up here. Okay, you got it. Uh, they, she makes this mandrel for holding that. And I put a draw bar in it. I was surprised how many of you guys got a hold of me and said, what in the hell are you talking about a draw bar? Well, this is a Morse taper. It's pointing at it, right? Yeah. This fits in the Morse taper and it uses the friction developed by the contact of all the surface from top to bottom and all the way around. Morse tapers hold very nicely, but they can be popped out. The Morse taper in my drill press popped out while I was sick and it corroded in there. Ah, no, no problem. All right. I went to the cabinet and I found this gizmo. This is my Morse taper cleaner. They come in three sizes, one, two, and three. You can put that in a Morse taper. You, you couldn't see that, but the dust and dirt that came out of it. There it is again. I can't get a camera in the right red spot to do it. But this is cleaning the inside, but it's not scouring it, and it's not brushing it, and it's not like steel wool. 
it's a rubber product and it's cleaning up the inside of that taper. Then on the other one, I would take a, gonna bring it back, I would take my Scotch Brite, and I call it Scotch Brite, but it might not be, and I just clean all the corrosion off the morse. You see, if this is good and clean, that's good and clean. There's a really good chance to go together and you won't have any vibration. Vibration is the, the enemy, pardon me. The draw bar, what the hell am I talking about? Goes through my headstock and pulls the Morse taper into it tighter. So it won't vibrate. So it doesn't have the tendency when I change the, the direction of the tool and pull away. I won't create a vibration because I'm holding What's holding my holding is holding. Wow. Those draw bars also work for drill chucks. I'm trying to read some other stuff. I just now found them. Part to my uh, rotating tailstock that I thought I'd lost. It was right there, plain sight. Um, but I have several gizmos and gadgets that go through the headstock. And I try to find if I'm using it in, in particular pen mandrels, like the adjustable pen mandrel, I'll get it and use a draw bar. Now most of them use standards. Quarter 20, 5 16, 18, 3 8 16, whatever. But they use the standard sizes. You can always go to your local hardware store and get a two foot length and then get a, a nut or knob to go on the end of it. If you don't really get those nuts or knobs, and I love these around the shop because they're handy. That's what I'm talking about. That five, one, two, five star nut. I get that at MSC Direct. They have pages full of these things. These knobs, the knobs that you use for your to lock your tool rest in place and your tail stock for moving and the jam on your table saw. Let me see if I can explain this to you better. I'm building a new tool. Brand new tool. It's a what's a diggy with a hula diggy and it's got a jacket. Alright. And it's going to be wonderful, but I got to take some cost out of the price. So I don't want to take the cost out of the oscillating spindle because then it won't oscillate. I don't want to take the cost out of the top because it'll cro be crooked. So where do I get the parts and pieces at? That's where I'm getting my savings at. Now remember, I'm big time business, and I'm only looking to get you on that one sale of buying a big piece. So I want to give you the cheaper crank handles, the cheaper knobs, the cheaper belts and bushings. That's I want to cheapen down on those parts, and that way I can bring this thing to that target number that the retailers look for. That's a ploy. That's a, it's a trick. It's terrible. You, you experience and I experience. It's a brand new tool. It's, you know, I have had brand new tools delivered here. Out of one box, needed crescent wrench and metric wrenches and standard wrenches all put it together because nothing was standard. They managed to find a lot of savings, but nothing was standard. All right. So if you're looking for something like that, MSC Direct is one. But you, you when you find it, you'll find they'll have all kinds of little things that you can work with and replace and change. Don't go back to Jet to get another one of those. I didn't mean anything Jet, okay? To get one of those silly plastic handles again, get a good one. I mean, you're putting a real little meat hook on it to hand it down. So pick a good one, all right? While you're picking, I got some other stuff to talk to you about. We get photographs. We get a lot of photographs, and I thank you for them. Uh, guys send me pictures of their best work. I like to see what you do. I really do. I like to see efforts you make and goals you achieve and milestones and all that, all, all those other keywords. I want to see them because I am talking to the world's finest wood turners. No BS boys. I'm talking to the finest wood turners in the world. So I'd like to see your pictures. And if you send me a picture, I'll do what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to show you these, uh, maybe I got 10 or 12 I haven't used up lately. Just take a look at them. Today's gallery 
is going to start with a piece by Joseph Winkler. A lot of detail, a lot of complex turning in this. Really nice. Tom Heather follows him up. This is a really nice piece. The wood speaks for itself. It's, uh, it's well done. Jim Burgess sent us a photograph of some of the tools he's made. And it, I tell you, what's he do with them? There it is. He makes pieces with them. So then we move on. Earl Hobbs has got a couple people keep his pieces coming up. Uh, this is the first one. It's a nice little piece. Character of the bowl works well. And this is a couple more folks pieces he did. And again, the wood character works. That's some nice work, isn't it? I mean, those guys all got something to be proud of. They accomplished something. Uh, and most of the turners I talked to today are around my age. They have retired. I've been retired for five years. I didn't want to retire. They called, came in one day and said, guess what? Today you're retiring. Uh, but now I'm enjoying some things. I had a little sickness. But I'm enjoying a few things. You're like me. And you want to achieve things and goals. And one thing about wood turning is it is immediate gratification. Immediate gratification. You're not building a chest of drawers or a dresser or a table or anything. You're doing an ink pen or a bottle stopper or a jar or a lid or a little bit of jewel. You are gratifying yourself. And trust me, everything you make, somebody wants. Um, i got to remind you again that SWAT, Southwest Association of Turners, is August 24th to the 26th. That's in Waco, Texas. Personal opinion, finest wood turning symposium in the entire world. Y'all could all try to beat me. This one won't. I told you we get a lot of photographs. When you send me the pictures, you have to send them to a certain address. C-A-P-N, Eddie Castellan at gmail.com. Don't send them to my website. Don't send them to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Stardust, Elephant, whatever you call it. Don't send it there. Send it to my email address. It's up here, right there. And then I can use it, all right? And put your name on it. Haven't heard from some guys in a while, like Greg Davis out of Knoxville. Greg and I have got to be buddies. He went through some of the same stuff I do, but he went through it a couple of years ago. So he knows what it's like for your brain not to heal, but you think it's healed. And boys and girls, that's what happened. All right, and remember, when you're working out here, some guy called the other day says that shield and the safety glasses in that like suspenders and a belt. Yeah, but my pants aren't going to fall down. Okay, I'll wear my safety glasses and my shield. Thank you. Um, and somebody asked, do we can we sell a single cutter? We sell every cutter we have, every tool we have. Nothing has to be in kits or packages. We'll sell them singly. If you want to buy a single cutter or pack of cutters with one of each or whatever, just call me on the phone and do it. And we can put it together for you. We charge you the minimum on the postage because we use the USPS. i got to cut the government on it somehow. <clears throat> and we, we put the package together for you. That's what we do. Little bitty company, big, big service. Uh, talk about it, not talk to folks. Um, the other day the phone rings and lo and behold it's Ron Radliff out of it's in the northwestern part of the United States he's way, he's moved as far away as he could get from me I don't know why but Ron's up there and he's having fun really is he's turning he's doing a little hard work and all it's, it's really nice he's an old Air Force rat like I am and it was good to hear from him um, and I like to hear from you guys and if you share an experience. Now, I am a Vietnam veteran. I served in the Air Force. I was in Vietnam 70, 71. Um, I was an ammo troop. Ammo troop. What's an ammo troop? Ammo troop is when, if they didn't have bullets, it'd just be one ugly airline. Right? You know, <laughs> if you can't shoot them or drop a bomb on them, why are you out there? So, I'm one of those ammo troops. I worked in a bomb dump. And also this week, Years ago, I was doing a, you know, doggone, I can't think of the name of the service, but it was a thing where we were live, like Carl Jacobson's doing right now, um, and we did it from the shop, and we did it Wednesdays and Saturdays, I think. We had a couple of shows. One of my listeners, viewers, participants, 
was a young man named Lee I. Woodard. He's out of center of the north. And Levi called the other day to say hi. He's now in his 20s. Uh, when we first met this man, he was 16. Uh, great, well-spoken young man. Great turner. And now a firefighter. Guess how... I would love to have the knowledge that Levi was right down the street at that firehouse keeping an eye on my property and protecting me. That's the kind of guy he is. The kind of guy you probably have your faith in. You know, it really is. So it was nice to hear from you. If you'd like to call me, anytime you want to call me about a problem, a situation, you want to brag, you want to BS, whatever, just give me a call. My number, I answer it whenever I can. I've got the phone out here. Okay, it's out here. I have to call it and find out where it's at. But I'll help you when I can and how I can. Alrighty? Well, that's what we had today. Hope you enjoyed the photographs. Get a little quick note on it, Forstner, and I mean on the, uh, the, 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 the the Morse taper, and a little bit about the super glue, and that's all I got today. I got to get back to making shavings. You got it. You got it. Take care. Be good. Stay out of trouble. Well, don't get caught if you're not staying out of trouble.